we know that it is Cancer Awareness Month, mm. so we always try and take some time to pay attention to a different woman's cancer. Mm -hmm. Usually we do yeah. on the show, so this time we're doing endometrial cancer, and we're going to talk all about it and mm -hmm. what you need to look out for. Correct. So it's uterine cancer. So that's one of the, you said it well, you said endometrial. Endometrial. Endometrial cancer. So the uterus has a variety of parts. It's about the size of your fist, unless there are other things going on, generally right. speaking. And the innermost lining is the endometrium. Okay. And that's the place where 80% of uterine cancers happen. There's the muscular wall. If it happens there, it's a little less common. But the one that women have a good incidence of, usually postmenopausally, the average time that it happens, so the average age of menopause is about 51. Mm -hmm. 10 years later is when it often manifests itself. Mm. And the number one sign or symptom is bleeding, postmenopausal bleeding. Okay, yeah. so if you are postmenopausal, might you be thinking, oh, this is just the last of my my periods or something like that? Yeah, like, well, the periods will have stopped, generally have speaking. Stopped. Yeah, and the thing is about women is that we're so keep calm, carry on, take care of everybody else. It doesn't necessarily have to be a floodgate of bleeding. It can be right. just the smallest little bit of, oh, I, I wiped and look, I have some blood. Uh -huh. Anyway, I'm going to go pick up the kids or get my grandkids and do whatever and not pay attention to it. And this is where... It's part of the take-home message. It's important to pay attention to it and mention it to your health care provider because the good thing about uterine cancer, well, the good thing about uterine cancer, mm -hmm. it's the most common gynecological cancer, but it's also very curable because it is um, detected early okay. because it manifests itself with a sign that someone goes, oh, maybe I should get this checked out. Is there anything else other than blood that might make you aware that something is wrong down there? Well, sometimes people can have pelvic pain. It okay. doesn't necessarily have to be full-on bleeding either. It can be kind of a liquidy pinky discharge okay. so it, it can manifest as well and some will say wow I haven't had a period for five years and lo and behold I had a period I'm ovulating probably that's not the case mm -hmm. so um, and then it can be other things it could be a polyp it could be something that shouldn't be there and needs to be investigated and the only way to actually know if you're safe or not is to see a healthcare provider and actually have what's called an endometrial biopsy or a little bit of tissue so it's a pipel is a small little straw that gets inserted through the cervix which is the lower part of the uterus and then up into the uterine cavity your family doctor can do it a generalist gynecologist can do it and then that gets sent off to the laboratory mm -hmm. and it's usually the most common kinds are glandular type or endometrioid cancers and those ones are detected in early stages but they can vary they can be aggressive and they can be non-aggressive so that's why it's not good to diminish it. It's important to get it investigated. Is that biopsy, does that, is it painful at all? I'm not saying it, that would be, you know, influence you either way, yeah, but it's yeah, good yeah. to know. It's a little uncomfortable. It's like when you go for a pap smear, so the speculum mm. goes into the vagina, mm -hmm. but instead of just staying at the cervix, the, ca the catheter goes all the way up into the uterine cavity. It feels like a really bad menstrual cramp, but okay. it's quick. So, but it's quick. So it's quick. It's about four seconds of pain and then it's over. It gets sent off to the laboratory and you get the information within the next week. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the, um, the stats here, mm -hmm. um, you, you told us it's the most common gynecologic cancer. Yep. Um, diagnosed early, treatable in most cases. Usually treatable and the, the way to treat it is taking out the uterus for the most part. Oh, that's what you have to do? That's what you have to do, yes. Oh, okay. There is an exception to that rule. Usually postmenopausal cancer is treated by hysterectomy. Mm -hmm. But it's important to not just say that it's only postmenopausally. Perimenopausally, so there's kind of the 10 years before menopause, mm -hmm. 41 to 51, where periods get interesting. So they get a little bit shorter, they happen more frequently, they, one will be heavy, one will be light. If you're spotting in between periods, it's still worthwhile investigating with someone. Okay. And actually, from a fertility perspective, as a fertility specialist, I will sometimes get referrals from gynae oncologists, so the gynecologists that deal just with oncology, with a patient who's been diagnosed with early endometrial cancer, mm. but that wants to have babies. So if you want to treat it, you're supposed to take out the uterus, but in those cases, if it's detected early enough, Sometimes you can use hormone treatment yeah. and suppress the lining, so thin it out enough and watch it enough so that you can make the cancer regress such that the person can actually manage a pregnancy in between and then once they're done with their childbearing, Remove then the they uterus. have the use. But of course that is a, a multidisciplinary, yeah, you never decide, don't go to your family doctor and say, I want to have a baby so I'm not going to deal with it. That's yeah. not, you have to be seen by a multidisciplinary team and we collaboratively together
together, we'll make a decision about whether that's an appropriate method of treatment for someone or not. Generally speaking, the way to treat endometrial cancer postmenopausally is to take out the uterus, and then mm -hmm. there are a variety of surgeries. So it doesn't necessarily mean just taking out the uterus. Sometimes you have to take out lymph nodes. Sometimes you have to take out the adjacent organs if the stage of disease is advanced enough and if it's spread distantly. Okay, so <clears throat> you're saying if you're postmenopausal, one of the quickest ways to figure out something's wrong is by bleeding. How do you do that if you're premenopausal? You're still getting your periods. Yeah. So you, is it? Are you looking for bleeding outside of your period? Outside of your period. So when you have your period, or even a change in the quality of your period. Okay. We so tend to not pay attention. Yeah. But there are risk factors. So if you, it's really ex length of exposure to estrogen is an, is one of the highest risks. So if people are obese, for example, they're at greater risk. If you are someone who has diabetes, you're at greater risk. Mm -hmm. If you have a family history of some genetic things, um, HNPCC, it's a type of a hereditary colorectal cancer, you're at greater risk of endometrial cancer. Okay. If you have an early um, first time of your period or a late menopause, your exposure to estrogen over your lifetime is longer, you're at greater risk. If you don't ovulate regularly, like mm -hmm. polycystic ovarian syndrome, you're at greater risk. So length of exposure to estrogen also increases your risk of endometrial cancer. So if you know you're one of those people, mm -hmm. you need to be aware and watch what your period is doing. Can you just go in and get any kind of a test done? No. No. No, no you one's can. gonna you you could talk about it, but we yeah. only do a test if it's indicated. So we Got really it. want to know if someone has the symptoms. If it looks like it's something that's going, if you're curious, yeah. sometimes they do an ultrasound, sometimes they put saline into your uterus to see, but mainly the mainstay, yeah. diagnosis with a biopsy. As with any other topic we discuss with you on this show, Marjorie, there is never enough time. Uh, yeah. We all know <laughs> that we're always just skirting the issue, and I say that for anyone out there that is watching, we give you the tip of the iceberg so you know when to go to your doctor. Mm -hmm. and and we raise a bit of awareness, and that's yeah. exactly what we've done, so thank you for that. It's